Okay. So, I don't know how to start this video because I literally plan absolutely nothing, which you probably know. Um, but this is a video I wanted to make for a while now, almost a, almost a month actually. Um, and you probably haven't noticed anything out of the ordinary, as me being gone for about a month isn't normally something of the ordinary for me, which I am trying to change. <laughs> At least I was trying to, but I'm a bit harder now, but I'll explain that later. Um, so, a while ago, if you follow me on like Instagram and Twitter, which you may or may not, um, the links to that will be in the bio along with other things but so the first thing that came up with why I was away was um so I got ill kind of like I had like a really bad cold like I had pretty much everything like sore throat blocked nose um scratchy throat cough the sneezing headaches um yeah I had literally like all of that like um uh around a month ago I guess it was if you, um, according to my video timestamps and text conversations and stuff, um, well, actually, gonna be longer than that, but I don't properly know at this current moment in time. Um, and so I was off for that reason, but then I got a text from my friend Ellie, who you um pro may or may not know, you might though, because she has been quite a few videos on the channel, um. And so while I was off sick from school, she gave me a message saying someone had found, uh, someone at school had found my YouTube channel. And obviously I'm a very awkward, shy, insecure person. And so I don't really like people at school finding out about my channel because a lot of them can be quite judgmental. Like, especially in my year, I have quite a lot of judgmental people. Um... And so I only tell my friends, and I was even really nervous for telling my family for a while, but quite a few of them know now. Um, so at least that part got out of the way. Um, so yeah, I got a text from Ellie saying, look, some, a boy at our school has found, uh, has like found your channel. And I was like, oh, who? And so when I was waiting for her response, I was very anxious about this because I didn't know who it was. Um... I didn't know how they would react um and I just was worried because the first thing that came to my mind oh if I go back to school and people know about that um I could I may get bullied for that because some things I do on my channel like the cosplay and stuff um or even me having a YouTube channel in general they may not really agree with and may make fun of me for um because unfortunately that ha is how people at my school kind of are um, and so Elliot replied to me and was like, oh, I don't know. I don't know his name. And so that got me really scared. And I was like, oh, this is bad. And she's like, yeah, I know. And so I stopped YouTube for, um, up until now. I had posted on Instagram first about it. There was, um, it won't be there now because I just took it down, um, a good, like, half an hour ago or something. Um, but there was a story that I put up where I like, made a highlight on my Instagram and it was about my YouTube hiatus that I um, had gone on and the reason and why behind all that. And then I posted it onto Twitter afterwards saying, look, first of all, I'm ill, so I'm going to be away for a few weeks for that. Then I'm like, there may be something that maybe keep me off YouTube for longer than that. And I explained the situation that I'm telling you about now. Um, and so when... So that was how I posted all that about, but if you don't follow me on there, you wouldn't have seen any of that. So yeah, the Instagram highlight is now taken down, but it, w it, it will still be on Twitter. I'll at least leave it on there, um, explaining the whole thing in more detail, kind of. I guess this video is going into more detail about it, but you know. Um, and so when I got back from school the next week from being ill, because I kind of like, this was like maybe like the Friday, like after school, Ellie like, texted me about it or something, or like I'd stayed off the last of the week. Um, and I got back to school and I was sitting with my friends at one point 
And there's these girls that are really judgmental and stuff in my year, who I'm not going to name, obviously. Um, but they're known to be very judgmental and kind of the kind of bully people at times. Because um, people in my year are a bit... You know, as I said, we'll keep going with the word judgmental. Um, and so when I got back, I was sitting with my friends and they were at a table like across from us or something in the cafeteria or the cafe. Um, and they were looking down at their phones and one of them and were like laugh and they were like laughing. And one of them made eye contact with me, or was like looking over at me at the time. It wasn't like, don't think I'm over, I may be overreacting because um, my insecurities and stuff may have gotten the better of me. But so my first reaction, knowing this and going back to school from finding out this information, was them judgmental girls that I know to be judgmental and bully people on their phones looking over at me from time to time laughing and so the, obviously the first thing that came to my mind being who I am was oh they know about my channel they found stuff I never wanted them to see um they're going to mock me about this nothing actually happened afterwards like I haven't actually talked um to those girls like ever well I have talked to them like once or twice as a common interaction um but since that interaction, I mean, I have had no contact with them whatsoever and they've never done anything like that again. Um, so I think, honestly, that was me overreacting and my insecurity is getting the best of me. But obviously my first reaction coming back to school um, from what I had found out did make me panic. And so I went through the next like week or so, nothing, everything was actually fine. And actually, up until now, that incident's never been mentioned again until now. And so, what made me decide to come back was because, one, nothing had happened, although I'm still nervous, if I come back to this, something will happen. Um, two, I have talked to people about this. I indirectly talked, no, well, actually, I told my mom about this. Um, I asked her, what would you do? And she's like, oh, I'd move my channel. And I was like, well, I can't really do that without having to move all my videos and stuff, which I don't know how to do. Um, so she couldn't technically help me with that, which I don't mind. Um, and then I had another conversation with Ellie. I was like, hey, if I went back into this, I know you support me with this. Um, do you, like, are you, if you were just someone random, would you genuine, like, do you genuinely enjoy my videos and don't just say yes because you're my friend? And she's like, yes, I do genuinely like your videos. Um, and so that got me thinking a lot and that helped kind of a bit and also recently um, I have seen and like read people's stories it's like so say I do come back to this um, and I do end up getting embarrassed like mocked and embarrassed for this and made fun of and bullied um, by people because it's like, oh, you do cosplay, you do all these things, they're weird for like a 14 year old girl to do. You're this obsessed with nerd, anime loving person. Um, things could be worse than that. I get that. Because of the stories and stuff I have, like, and people's experiences I have, like, watched and read recently. Um, and they're like, oh. I didn't cry or anything like that, I didn't say anything because I would be giving them what they want, I mean, referring, them referring to the bullies, um, and say, obviously, I may just be overreacting and nothing will happen if I come back to this, because, um, again, it may just be my insecurity is working up on me, um, but I may not be able to do that, because I'm a very shy and um, conservative and secure girl. And I get quite emotional at times. But for now anyway, I'm going to just see what happens. And that'll be that. But apart from everything I've told you for the past 10 minutes about now, I'm not going to bore, kind of bore you with that anymore. Um, and we're going to get on to the second half of this video, which is actually an idea from my friend Rihanna. 
and she's like, oh, you have a turn to YouTube, she'd be like, a book collection. Um, and I'll, as you can see here, and I've also got some in a box next to me. Um, and I was like, you know what, sure, this will be my return to YouTube video, but also explaining what happened. Um, but yeah, so, I guess, without further ado, let's go on to the second part of this video. Okay, right, so obviously, you aren't dumb, you know I'm probably doing this all in one go, but it's just a time skip in between. Um, but I realised there was a part I forgot to mention in the first half. I am now in fourth year. You may have seen this if you follow me on Twitter. I'm in fourth year now, which means I am considered a senior in my high school. Um, so also, that gives me a lot of homework and tests to do now, and I'll be getting ready for exa exams in like May or like the end of the year. One of the two, or both actually. So that takes up my time a lot more now. Just wanted to say that. Um, but without further ado, I can now proceed to showing you my book collection I guess remember I'm not a professional youtuber so I've not organized any of this also these books are not all out the shelf because my OCD would not let me take them all out and redo them so we're just gonna take them out one by one but first of all I'm gonna go through this box I have next to me you can't see it because it's below the webcam as you know, I'm obviously very professional here, and I film on my laptop. Woohoo for me. Um, but yeah, so, first book. I don't know. This is the top one. So this is the survival game. Um, I read this recently, like, well, um, not really recently, but like a, a few months ago or something. Um, not that bad a book, in all honesty. In all honesty, um, it's not as exciting as you'd expect, or at least as I expected. Because um, I first saw this cover and I read the back and I was like, oh, this sounds really cool. Not as good as I once thought, but I did still read it, I did still like it. Um, so it's like this apocalyptic, not really apocalyptic, because it's not like there's some zombie virus or anything going around. Um, and basically there's this one girl who's been separated from her family and stuff and she finds this um, boy while she's out hunting and he is kind he's kind of mute um, so but she takes him out and feels like she has to protect him and that's the idea of that very good book well again didn't quite live up to my expectations but you may think differently that's okay everyone has their opinion um, I'm gonna do these ones kind of all in one because, I mean, a couple are by the same author, not all of them, but I'm going to do them all in one go, because they're all kind of like these, like, this size of a book, like, kind of, you know, smaller as compared to, like, your normal book size. Um, so the first one is, also, you'll notice, all of my books are kind of dark, especially the covers and stuff. Uh, can't really explain that. Um, so the first one's the murder game. Haven't actually read this. You're gonna find I haven't actually read quite all of my books because at one point there was this English homework we got set. It was like reading every day record. So you were specifically set homework to read and that took the fun out of it for me. So a lot of these books have been set back from reading. And I have quite a few books. Not as, much, not as many as I'd want. I still have a huge wish list of books that I want. Um, but you know. It's fine, I can still do this. Um, also, I am going to be back because my laptop isn't actually charging, so I'm going to fix that quick. See, again, very professional. I'm trying to stop working in like, the middle of filming. But yeah, anyway, so a lot of these I haven't actually read, but I can still kind of give you a synopsis from the back because that's what the back of the book is for. Um, Okay, I'm just going to read you part of this, I'm not going to read you like all of them because some do have blurbs that are quite long and I don't want this because most of my, I don't want this being really long because most of my videos recently have been like half an hour or more and I don't want to do that. Um, so yeah, so what the, what the content's put about um, is terror, thrill, 
thrills, drama, law and order and conspiracy. So it already tells you a lot, and it's literally called The Murder Game by um, Beverly Barton. Oh yeah, Survival Game was by Nikki Singer, by the way. Um, but yeah, so I'll just read you parts of this. Um, Private investigator Griffin Powell, an FBI agent, Nicole Baxter, know a lot about serial killers. Sounds like one of my friends. Um, don't know who they are. Um, they brought one down together, but this new killer is as sadistic as war, as any day if... Wait, I messed up. But, this new, this new killer is as sadistic as any they've ever seen. He likes his little games, and he especially likes forcing Nicole and Griff to play along. Every unsolvable clue, every posed victim, every taunting phone call, it's all part of his twisted, elaborate plan. And then the hunter seeks out his most precious prey of all, and Griff finds himself playing for the biggest stakes of his life. So that's that. So yeah, um, I obviously understand that some of these books you won't like. I do kind of like the whole, you know, murder, crime thing, depending on what the book is. So, quite a few of them kind of darker titles and stuff, you know. So, that was, again, The Murder Game by Beverly Barton. This is The Summoning by Kelly Armstrong. I have two books by Kelly Armstrong. Only these two. Um, the other one is Living, Living with the Dead, both of which still haven't read. Um, this one actually caught my eye. Um, one, because it's called The Summoning, and I'm kind of into the supernatural stuff. Um, and also the fact that the main character is actually called Chloe, and her last name is Saunders. Um, which is the last name of a friend of mine. Not going to tell you her first name, because that gives you her full name, and let's not do that. Um, so, yeah. So this is, um, All Chloe Saunders wants is a life like any normal teenager that chance to get through school. Oh my god, it's me. <laughs> um, make friends and maybe meet a boy. Hmm. But when she starts seeing ghosts, she knows that life will never be normal again. Um, so yeah, obviously not the full thing, but that's just a general thing. Because this video will be too long if I go through reading every blurb and every bug. Some of these I can tell you about, and I don't have to read the blurb, so this video will hopefully shouldn't be too long. Um, thankfully for you. And for me. Um, yeah, so as you can see, this is like smaller text, so it's like one of those longer ones. But yeah, so Living With The Dead, Kelly Armstrong again. Um, Robin, Robin Pel Peltier, I think that is, has never done anything out of ordinary, so when her new boss is murders and she is named prime suspect, she finds herself way out of her depth. Only her best friend Hope Adams and Hope's somewhat spooky boyfriend Kyle are on her side. So again, only part of it. Hopefully that gives you something. Um, obviously all these books you can, like, look up somewhere, or like, properly get a full description. This is just kind of me shooting you my book collection. Um, this video's already nearly 20 minutes. I am not good at this! <laughs> Bloody hell! Right, um, so let's try and go quicker. Right, Angel Time by Anne Rice. I'd assume is how you say that. Um, short of blurb. No, wait, no, no. yep, there you go. Um, Toby O'Dare, Lucky the Fox is a contract killer of underground underground fame. In his youth, Lucky had dreamt of being a priest and said he fell into a life of danger and violence. Living under a series of aliases, he long ago lost any sense of his true self, becoming a pawn to, to the right man, a contractor of dark and unknown allegiances. That sounds like a cult, but we're gonna ignore that for now. Uh, so next, I have, these are technically two spare books. Um, cause I don't know if you can see it from here, but I have the full set of them on my, mm, on my shelf. So, let's just get those out. Cause again, we're not professional here. So, you know. But yeah, haven't actually took these out the thing, cause I like them being together. Um, so this is the Knots and Cross series by Mallory Black, Mallory Blackman. Um, recommended to me by a friend. So, these two books... I got for, yeah, these two books I asked for for Christmas, the first two, um, Knots and Crosses and Checkmate. But then, I got dragged for a full day charity shopping by my parents, and found a full set. So, you know, 
so I have two spare books that I need to give to someone. But, you know. Um, again, haven't had the time to read these, unfortunately. Um, really want to, though, but from what my friend Rihanna has told me. Um, it's sort of like, so obviously it's like, it's kind of, it's about prejudice, like racism, things like that. Um, so you've obviously got the knots and the crosses, I assume? Yeah. Um, and so there's like romance between two people from the two sides, but it's not allowed. Um, I, I believe we're both different races. Like, um, I, I, I think it's knots and crosses from what I remember, because I don't actually remember book summaries all that well, surprisingly, unless I've properly read it. Um, and so yeah, I think like knots and crosses, like one is white people, one is. I never know the right term to say because I'm afraid it'll be racist, so take that as you will, just assume. Um, don't assume things though, but like I hope you get what I mean. Um, so there's one race, second race, um, one person from each fall in love, that's forbidden, you know, things like that happen. So that is the this is four books in the series. There is, <clears throat> sorry, I've just, just recovering from a sore throat recently had, because I'm ill, like, all the time. Um, so first book, Knots and Crosses, as you have here, and you also have here. Second book is, no, wait a minute, are you telling me this whole time? I had the first and the third. Okay, so it's actually good I found this set, because at Christmas I did a wrong thing and got the first and the third instead of first and second. So, um, yeah, so you have the second one, Knife Edge, if this is, yep, Knife Edge. Third one is Checkmate, also have it down there as a spare one. And the fourth one, Double Cross. So, those sound like good books, need to get some time to read them, but, you know, who knows when that'll be. Because high school sucks. Also, leaving in like three weeks to go to Malaga, so you know. Because it's my summer holidays in like two weeks. Um. <clears throat> okay. So, this book here, um, it's by Maggie Steve Vater. Vater. Steve. Can't say her name right. Don't actually know how it's pronounced. Maybe one of you can help me. Um, so this is a book, The Raven Boys. Again, a suggestion from my friend, my Anna. She, um, had a lot of books as well. And so I get a lot of suggestions from her. Um, so I read about a quarter of this in school. And I thought it would be interesting, but I kind of got bored for it. For it. Um, it doesn't mean to offend no one actually does like this book. But I just kind of did. Um, maybe just not my cup of tea or whatever. Might be yours though. Um, so I'll just read this quickly. Um, luckily it's not so hard for me to read quickly. Even if Blue hadn't been told by her true love, told her true love would die if she kissed him, she would stay away from boys. Especially the ones from a local private school known as Raven Boys. They only mean tr trouble, but this is the year that everything will change for Blue. Again, not the whole blurb, as you know, the blurb of the book, the back of the book. Um, that's because we've already got like 24 minutes here. And I'm trying to not make this half an hour, but let's be honest, it'll be half an hour. Oh well. Um, so, sorry if I'm going through these too quickly, it's because I've got quite a lot and I tend to stray a lot from the topic and stuff. Um, but again, you can look these up and stuff and get more detail about them. Um, so, Three Wishes by Leanne Moriarty, I believe is how her first name is pronounced. Um, so, they say trouble always comes in threes, and for sisters Lynn, Kat, and Gemma Kettle, the year, the year they turn 30, 33, I actually can't, like, say, so I'd got 33 with, like, an F. I struggle with the TH things sometimes but, you know anyway 33 um and the year they turn 33 is no exception 
Um, I'm going to skip that paragraph because that's a bit of a longer one. Nope. Through everything, the bonds of the sisters are strong enough to withstand whatever life throws at them. That is until the night of their 34th birthday dinner, when home truth is revealed and things are said that can't be taken back. So obviously, I am reading this. Well, I, obviously, I read the back of this. Me and haven't read it yet, because um, this was yet another book from a charity shop haul. I get taken to charity shops sometimes for my parents. And so, only thing I find interesting in there is the book. So, you know, um, we're gonna just take all these four out because they're miscellaneous, much like the Three Wishes and the Raven Boys that I just showed you. Um, the Raven Boys is part of a series, by the way. I don't know how many, maybe a trilogy? I don't know. Where is this page? I'm so professional. Okay, no idea. If someone's read it, sure they know. I don't really know. So, sorry. Um, so, here's... Um, well, actually, yeah. So, miscellaneous books. Much like the last two, as I said before. So, this is The Lie Tree by... Fra would you say that? Francis, I guess you'd say that? Um, Hardinge, I think. And then... This is one I've had for a few years now, as you can tell, because all my books are a little older, because I'm 14 now, and I prefer to read older books. But this is one I've had for a few years, and I do still quite like it, so but I've kept it. It's a flip book, meaning there's like, this side there's um, Lost in the Storm, and you'll flip it upside down, turn it around, you got Lost in the Snow. I think Lost in the Snow is the first one, and then it's Lost in the Storm don't know you can find it for yourself if you yeah so you can obviously tell this is kind of a more like book for younger people because they like how short this is as compared to say something like the raven boys where you've got like this um but yeah that's that so i have read this obviously so it's a cat called i've forgotten its name his name i think Fluff. It's a cat called Fluff. Um, and basically the idea of the story is he's been taken in, I think. I'm trying to remember because this was like a good few years ago that I read this. Um, and basically he gets like, there's a common theme, he gets lost in the snow, his family can't find him. Then he gets l lost, obviously, and same thing happens, he gets lost in the storm. Or vice versa, can't quite remember. Again, sorry about that. Um, oh god, nearly half an hour. Right, this is great. Um, again, no book I've had for a while. I have read this, but I, like, very long ago. It's called Cap Cosmo and the Magic Sneeze. Um, so it's about this cat called Cosmo, who's always, wa he wanted to be, like, a witch cat. Um, like his father, I believe it is. Yeah, like his father. So when he passes the special test, he's really excited. Now he can use his magic sneeze to help Sybil the witch mix her spells. So yeah, so obviously he wants to be a witch's cat, like his father, as I literally just told you. Um, and so he gets <laughs> his ability of the magic sneeze by passing the test or whatever. Um, and he can help his witch cast mix spells. So he's really happy. Um... So, Lie Tree, uh, but I'll probably explain to you, because again, a book I haven't read, common theme here, actually I think most of my books are the one I haven't read. Um, so, I'm just going to read this to you. Is it part of a series, or is it, wait, there's other books, I, I don't know if it's a series or not, I just know there's other books. Wait, no it is, because I think Cuckoo Song is the second one. Yeah, so there's other books in the back here, and I believe, because my friend has read this. She read, like, Cuckoo Song after this, so I believe that's a series. Not quite sure on that one. Don't quote me on that. Uh, I'm just going to read this quickly to you. The leaves were cold and slightly clammy. There was no mistaking them. She had seen their likeness painstakingly sketched in her father's journal. This was his greatest secret, his treasure and his undoing, the tree of lies. Now it was hers, and the journey he had never finished stretched out before her. Um, so, I'm not going to read this whole thing. I'll summarise it. So the main character Faith, her father is found dead under like mysterious from a mysterious cause, um, and 
she kind of wants to untangle what said is the truth from the lies. And so she looks through his stuff for clues when she finds the strange tree, which I assume is the lie tree. So, you know, I mean, it's the cost of book of the year in 2015, so pff, must be good, you know? Um, so this one, a lot of you will know, because it's The Maze Runner by James Dashner. Yep, got that right. Didn't want to screw that up. I have seen all the movies from The Maze Runner up to Death Cure. I haven't had the chance to read the books because I don't have the series and normally I like well I say normally <laughs> um but sometimes I don't. Normally I get the series and then I'll like like read it. Some books are an exception though. So yeah, I only got this like sometime last year. I say that I could have read that in that time. Oh well. But yeah, so I haven't I don't have the series for this so it's in this box. Cause how I actually work things is if I have the series but I don't have all of them, they'll go in the box. But if I have the full series, as you may see some up there, they'll go in the shelf. Um there is a certain book there that I there's a certain book there and a certain series. So the series I'm missing one book from which I didn't notice before, so I need I think it's one, maybe two. No, one. Um, but you'll see that soon. And so I need to get a book for that, but I've got most of them, so it's up there. And there's this one book that I just really <laughs> like the cover of and I really want to read, but it's not the first book, so I can't. So I've just kind of put it up there instead of the miscellaneous box. But you know. Anyway, so Maze Runner. I'm going to assume most of you know what this is. Um, I know it's a great book because the movies are great and I just know the story's great. So, and if you don't know what it's about, that's fine too. Um, but because most people probably do, I'm going to leave the explanation on this one because we're past the half an hour mark. Okay, so last in the miscellaneous one, in the miscellaneous box, is this box of stuff I've got. It's called Codes and Conspiracies, leading me to believe it's books on Codes and Conspiracies, would you have guessed? Um, so there is eight books in here, because you can probably count, all by different authors. I mean, I don't think, I mean, it isn't a series, it's just a bunch of books about Codes and Conspiracies put together. And I was like, you know what, they sound cool, I'm going to get it. Um, as you can tell, if they're in this box and in the Conspiracy box, and also look like they're in pristine condition. They haven't been touched or read. What do you mean you've got touch and read them? Oh well. Um, so, surprise, surprise, Chloe not coming through to read her books again. <laughs> Whoa, who would have seen that coming? Um, but yeah. So, I'm just going to read you these on one. So there's The Road to Gandolfo by Robert Lud Ludlum, I think. That is. The Wheel of Darkness by Douglas Preston and Link, Link, Lincoln, Lincoln Child. The Mark of the Assassin by Daniel Silva. A Spy's Life by Henry Porter. And The, the Third Secret by Steve Berry. Map of Bones by James Rollins. Um, God's Spy by Juan, Juan Gomez Gerardo. And The Dante Trap by Ar Arnold de la Lande, I think that is. Um, so I do really want to read these. Some are more excited about than others. For example, A Spy's Life, I don't know how, too, how excited I'm going to be about that. Um, the Dante Trap I'm kind of most excited about, I think. Um, but yeah, so A Spy's Life, probably the one I'm least excited about. Dante Trap, maybe the one I'm most excited about. Um, because we're getting, this is getting longer. I'm not going to read you the blurbs of these unless I kind of have read them and known them because again we're past half an hour I don't want this to go on too long plus it's kind of getting later into the afternoon so you know I'm just going to leave these now um also I have certain things here that are technically school books well they are school books but I thought I'd show you them anyway um so I have two physics books here because I want to be an animal technician no veterinary surgeon it's because it was originally an animal technician I want to be a veterinary surgeon when I'm older, and physics is a suggested subject, so I was originally going to take up physics in fifth year, but I don't know if I am now. So, you know, 
But anyway, so these are physics books that my mum got me for my brought her brought me home for my for my work. Um, and then also this is something she got me recently because I just did two maths tests that came late, so I couldn't really use it. It's a maths pass paper thing. If you don't know what pass paper is, it's basically a paper that's been used in a test, and this is an example. So you know, kind of know the questions that will be in tests, and you get to practice how well and see how well you can do them. Yeah, thought I'd show you them. Because past papers do actually quite help. Haven't tried the physics stuff yet, because I don't take physics. Um, yeah, so that's the miscellaneous box. Let's do the bookshelf and go through that quickly. So first of all, actually, technically, I might as well have said that's not done, because there are a few miscellaneous books up here. Starting with, oh god, no, what car is going to fall? Um, starting with these two. So, this one, it's a big book, obviously. Um, it's called Of Lions and Unicorns. I really want to read this because it does sound really good. Um, it's by M Michael Morpego. His books are actually really good. Um, I have read other ones of him. I think this is the only one I actually have right now, though. Um, yeah, so again, Lions, Unicorns, sounds quite cool. I like literally just flipping through the pages and seeing certain things. Um, it does kind of interest me. So, you should probably go read that because it does sound quite exciting. Um, now this, the one probably almost everyone knows, Harry Potter. Sound like I had an accent there. Technically do, but we can like that. Um, I have watched the Harry Potter movies. And yes, they are different to the books. I do know that. There is information in the movies, in the books that is left out of the movie. Is I do know that. Um, but I watched the movies first because I have never had the Harry Potter books, and this is the only one I currently own, unfortunately, because I prefer to own the books and read them, than go take them out from the library because it means I get a lot more time to read them instead of, like, and then my own time rather than having to renew them constantly. But yeah, so this is unfortunately the last one because I actually got some book sale at my mum's work, well, my mum and stepdad's work. Um, and this was kind of the only one they had, and someone had took the other ones, so there was like three or four more, but they had took them. So this is Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, so it's the last one, can't read it yet. Um, again, not going to go into explanation about this because almost everyone knows it. Oh god, 40 minutes, is that really how long I've been doing this? Don't believe that actually saying that most of this was 10 minutes of this was something else um so we have a few more little miscellaneous things up here if i move my stuff and move my nice setup i have um no oh, one of these isn't a book example this is a photo album that you don't get to see that um this is just a journal my sister one of, one of my sisters got me for christmas it's really nice. I don't know what to write in it. She like wrote me a little note in it too. But yeah, I don't know what to write in it, so I haven't used it yet. But so that's a nice little thing she got me. Um, this is something my mum got me a few months back. It's the little book of confidence, and she obviously thought this would help her with her confidence. It hasn't worked yet, but we'll see. This is my Susan Jeffers, if you want to try this out, but who knows. Um, this, I got years ago. Like, and I mean years ago. It's a book of dog breeds and stuff. Well, that's not a dog breed. That's the contents. So, like, you've got, like, so I'll tell you, like, sp sporting dogs. And then you'll go through and have all this, and it'll tell you, like, how easy they are easier or hard they are to have a pet, how much they need to go out, stuff like that, how like, they like around children or whatever. So that I really loved when I first bought it, haven't looked at it in a while. Um, also, we're still asking my landlord if I can get a dog, literally cried in the garden because I thought I'd never be allowed one, so that was a thing. So this is, but anyway, this next thing, YouTuber book, also only YouTuber book I own, Kinda a bit older now, cause 
you want to know how I know that? Because one, I knew it came out kind of a while ago. Two, they have the emo finches. Uh, so this is the amazing book is, wait, the amazing book is not on fire by Dan and Phil, aka Dan is not on fire and amazing Phil, YouTubers who I absolutely love. Um, so yeah, I found this in like a bookshop and I asked like, um, I think we were actually going in there for like a gift or something. Um, but yeah, I asked my mum if I could get this and she was just like, you know what, sure. So I did. I got it. Haven't read it in a while. Might go back and do that. But, yeah, so that's that. Next thing. It's about, about the same size as that, but not as thick. Um, it's Twisted Fairy Tales. So fairy tales I actually quite like, depending on what the fairy tale is. Um... And so this is by Maura McHugh. Um, so yeah, it's basically your common fairy tales, but put, like turn into, but turn into like a twisted version. But saying that the original fairy tales, if you don't know, were all these evil horrific versions anyway that I don't think I can talk about. But yeah, so there's like Snow White, and there's like um, actually Snow White goes for a while. Um, and so this is, like, Rapunzel, and then there's the Bone Whistle, the Gold Spinner, Main the Elf Knight, the Goose Girl, Godmother Death, the Seven Ravens, the Pied Piper, and it goes on, the list goes on. I have read these, they are extremely good, highly recommend this. Um, because although, yes, Twisted Things may not be, Fairy Tales may not be a thing, but say if you like something like gore, well, not fully gore, or like something a bit darker, like, a, this is, these are genuinely, like, fairy tales, but put with a dark twist. And I do really enjoy these. So, highly recommend that. Um, right, you know what? We're gonna try something. I'm just gonna try, show you these from here, if I move that. My camera's still shaking, I think it is. If I move these books out of the way, so I don't like stand on something oh i'm making a mess oh well i'll clean it up after um these you've seen in the comic con haul so i don't need to show you these they're my signed scripts um we'll start from the top here so first we have well you can't see it from like this angle but anyway so first we have advent by james treadwell haven't properly read that but the book, the book looks like this, and it's like that long, so, um, I can read this, read the blurb because it's kind of short. For centuries it has been locked away, lost beneath the sea, watered from earth, air, water, fire, scrying forth in sight. The magic has risen to the world once more, and a boy called Gavin, who thinks only that he is a psychic, with parents who hate him, and knows only that he sees things no one else will believe, is born in a train alone to Cornwall. No one will be there to meet him. It sounds really interesting. Again, haven't got all down to reading it. Because things I've mentioned before. Uh, next one is Stalker by Lars Kepler. This I have read. So I can tell you about it. It's this long. Um, so there's this. So there's a detective. Or there's this female detective who is pregnant, I believe, if I remember it. Right. Yeah, she is. She's pregnant. And so there's like all these like murders going around. Um, and what happened is the killer will send them, her and the police a video of them watching the soon to be victim. Like so they'll send them a video and then they'll find the vi and then they'll find the dead like the, the dead body afterwards. Um and so, you know, it's a thing like that. Um, the, so they're called the stalker, the stalker killer or whatever. And I have to admit, I did really enjoy this. And the actual, like, murderer himself, I didn't actually expect until, like, the end. Um, so that was kind of cool. Because you don't really want to, you don't want a predictable book, do you? I mean, maybe you do, but I personally don't. Um, but yeah, so I really enjoyed this. I recommend it. Again, Stalker by Lars Kepler. 
oh my god, we have so many books to go through, and it's nearly been an hour that I actually it's fine. So let's take these next for you. So, Prince of Blood by Patricia Bracewell. Haven't read this. Kind of an older book set in olden times, but I've Queen and stuff like that. Um, and it's like the Vikings fitting in to, you know, do things because Vikings fit in to do things. I'm not giving you good descriptions because I'm taking too long with this. Um, haven't read it. A surprise. Um, so that's about a queen. Yep. Um, she can't trust anyone, basically. Not even the king's first son, who is the man she truly loves. And Vikings... And, um, as Vikings threat to the cr threats to the crown are gaining strength, Emma must protect her only child without abandoning her royal duty. And it's about the conflict, conflict of that. It's actually set, it's set in Britain. Wow. <laughs> Never knew that part. Next two books. The Illusionists by Rosie Thomas. And The Children's Book by A.S. Buy It. This, my mum called me a bit ambitious with. Because there's loads of words in here. And the text is very small, and the book is this big. So, but this does sound very interesting. I'm not going to read that to you. Um, if you, if you want me to, if you like the sound of any of these books, but I haven't given you a proper description of them, and then maybe, like, comment below and tell me if you want me to do a review on any of them. Um, I'll try to get around to reading them. Hopefully be able to give you a book review. Yeah, so comments. If you like any of these books, so try, tell me. I'll try to read them, give you a review on them. Yeah, so this I haven't read. Really want to though. This I have read. Um, I did get kind of bored after a while, I'll admit. Um, so this gives me the greatest showman vibes if you've ever watched that movie. Because... Well, actually, it's not for really like the greatest woman, but I, you may understand why it gives me the vibe. Um, so there is this man whose name I can't remember. I've read, read it, so I'm going to try not use the book. And so he has this idea that he wants to do show stuff. You know, I read this too long ago. Um, ah, Devil Wix. Yeah, he's a showman. And he puts on all these kind of, they're not, they're not plays really, I mean they kind of turn to that in the end. And it's, think you're a common magician, kind of. He does all these um, acts with people he knows about, um, like, but they're called illusions. Because it's like, oh how do you do that? And it gives the illusion something else, kind of. That's not a good description, but you know what? Um, and so his name's, like, he gets called Devil Wicks, yeah. And so one of the people he ends up getting to work with him, called Eliza, she ends up falling in love with him. But he doesn't at first, like, accept her love properly. Like, oh, I love you back, you, you, we'll get married, and have loads of kids and stuff. He doesn't do that. Excuse you. Who knows what that siren was for? Um... But in, I'm not going to spoil the end for you, because I have done that for myself before. I think I actually did that with the survival game. Um, I skipped like the last few pages and went to the end, but it was only like the last few pages, so, you know. But it is a good book. Didn't like it as much as I expected to, but still a good book. Still do recommend. So let's put these back so I don't get annoyed. I thought, sorry, I thought my like laptop stopped recording for a minute. Okay, next series, I, yes, it's a series I will happily talk about. It's called The Gone Series. It is six books long, and they're by Michael Grant. I have read, I am on the fourth book currently, called Plague, because the series is um, Gone, Hunger, Lies, Plague, Fear, and Light, and I'm on Plague. Very good books. 
highly recommend. I feel like I've said that a few times now. So the first thing is, anyone, I think it's, I think it's 15 and over, maybe six, maybe 16. I think it's 16. It's like anyone, 15 or 16, one or two. Don't, you know, figure, um, don't quite remember. Wait, we can double check. So I can literally have a book behind me. Chloe, what are you doing? Okay, anyone 15 and above has kind of, they've disappeared from the world. Like, they basically, they might as well not exist anymore. At least for up until the part I'm at. Um, and if you turn 15, like if it's your 15th birthday, you kind of disappear too. And the whole thing is, everyone, like all these kids under 15, they have to kind of survive alone. And a lot of them have found they have like powers. Like for example, can I tell you this? I'll tell you, if you don't want to hear it, just skip up my head a little bit. So the main character, he like shoots light from his hands. So that's a thing. He can also make like, I think he's made light in the sky at one point. Um, yeah, and so some are normal, some have like powers, and they're all like kids under 15, and they've got to survive in this world without anyone over 15. And basically it's like, the whole like kind of story is showing you how it goes. There's like conflict between different people. It's really cool. There's like certain twists and people that have come into it that you didn't expect, um, that you'll get surprised by. And I really love it. Um, this was a series I found on my own. And I do really enjoy it, genuinely. So I do really think that you should read The Gone series by Michael Grant. Um, but furthermore, next thing, Telltale by Sam Hayes. Haven't read it, can't tell you about it. That's all I'm going to do because this video is nearly an hour. Sorry about this. But again, if, like, if you want me to review a book, tell, like, comment down below. Um, the Knots and Crosses series have been over. Autobiography. This I have read, this I can't tell you about. So, this is actually a gay love story book. So if you don't like that, don't read it. Simple as that. Yeah, autobiography. Really, really enjoyed it, genuinely. Um, and it's about... So, this boy, um, what he does in school is, like, um... He has to do like a story, like he has to write a novel for like homework or whatever, or like a project. And he knows this boy's age, or like people know this boy his age, um, called Sebastian. Because did I say the main character is called Tanner? I think I did, might not have. Well, yeah. And he's already, I think he's already an author or something. I kind of got confused about that, about that bit. And so the thing is, he Tanner ends up falling in love with Sebastian, but Sebastian's parents are kind of religious, I think is how it works. Yeah, they're like religious and so they don't agree like with this. So the whole thing is about Tanner and Sebastian's love story kind of like struggling with like the views of the world. And you know, and like Tanner himself is scared of how people would react to find out he's gay. And really cute, just LGBTQ boy love story. Um book Next book, um, again, not going to give you descriptions for these unless I've read them, sorry, again. Next one's The Dollmaker by Richard Montanari. Um, you know, kind of sounds like what it is, it's just like, people, uh, okay. Um, a woman cycles past a train depot with her daughter, um, and there she finds a murdered girl posed on a newly painted bench, strangled. Holy crap. Oh, right, you know what? I'm not gonna read this, let's just read the red text. Mr. Marcel is polite, elegant, and erudite. Don't know what that means. Gonna look it up. Actually, you know what? Phone's right here. Okay, Google, tell me what erudite means. That would work. Okay, Google, what does erudite mean? There we go. This is the definition.
possession of erudite, having or showing great knowledge or learning. There you go. Word of the day. So, yeah, erudite, he would do anything for his true love, Annabelle. And he is a psychopath. So that's nice. Okay, next one's called... You know what, we'll just get these three out as a whole. Because I can pick them up as a whole. Why not? No correlation to each other, but oh well. So this is called... This one's called Sirens by Joseph Knox. Really wanted to read this one. Don't know why I haven't got around to it yet. Um, probably because I was in the middle of reading her book, but you know. Um, I'm just going to read you the three little sentences, because it's like three like subheadings, and then they've got descriptions under them. So I think it's like three different stories in one, kind of. But it's like all linked together or something. Um, Detective Aiden. Detective Aiden Waits is in trouble. Isabel Rossiter has run away again. A single mother missing for a decade. So that's, you know. Next one we had Book of Souls by James Oswald. Um, okay, let's see. Every year for 10 years, a young woman's body was found in Edinburgh, again, set around where I live. Set around in the country I live in. You know? You know. Um, a young woman's body was found in Edinburgh at Christmas time. Naked, throat slit, body washed clean. It's, um, so there's that. Oh, and then there's another one that turns up. Is this a copycat killer? What's the wrong man behind bars all this time? Or is there a more sinister explanation? Hmm. Couldn't read that. Um, and this is the doll's house. Not the doll maker. Doll's house. Different book. By M. M. J. Eulage. Um, a young woman wakes up in a cold dark cell with no idea how she got there or who her kidnapper is. So begins her terrible nightmare. Great. I have books surrounding me, but I'm gonna ignore that because you can't see them. Oh my god, this is taking way too long. I should have had a better way to do this, but I didn't. Okay, well, let's skip one book temporarily. Fangirl by Rainbow Roll. Rainbow Roll, or Verol. Um, really great author. I've read two of her books. Only have one of them though. And this is called Fangirl. Have read this. So this is girl, obviously. And she um has her identical twin. And they did like everything together until recently I think they um went to college or something. Oh no, sorry, they went to university and um so one of her twins and here in the book it says it's Ren. Um, she decides she doesn't want to be like one of a pair anymore, like she wants to be separate. Um, but yeah, and it's not so easy for the other twin, because she's the one called Kath. She's the one who writes like fanfiction, I believe. Yeah, she would rather bury herself in fanfiction. Um, although she hasn't really experienced romance like that in real life. And so it kind of goes through their lives and what that's like for them, specifically Kath. Um, I mean, like, Kath has to decide whether she's ready to open her heart to people and stuff. Really good book, though. Definitely recommend. Along with other books of Rainbow Rolls. So, the one I skipped. A Song of Shadows by John Connolly. Haven't read this one, so I can't really tell you about it. Um... Previously wounded but unbroken, private investigator Charlie Parker faces the darkest of forces in a case where its roots in the Second World War in a concentration camp like any other. Well, unlike any other, sorry. So that's about some sort of concentration camp thing. This next one. The Fire Child by S.K. Tremaine. Have read this real long time ago though. So don't probably remember, it was a good two years ago now? Oh, wait, no, no, no. So this girl... Um, or this woman, she's like recently um like married someone new, um a new man who like has um and because she's married him, she's gained herself a stepson. Um, and I think the kind of mo like the thing of the story 
it's like this stepson can do like things that normal people can't do and he is essentially the fire child i believe is how that works um but you know read it for yourself good book don't exactly remember how it goes probably gonna reread it sometime um but yeah definitely want to recommend okay now that's one one of the books i was talking about earlier how i i know i know the cover's a bit suggestive but we're gonna ignore that it's called burning dawn by gina schalter it's the third in a series i believe a, yeah angels of the dark book three so the series is called angels of the dark this is a third book but i saw this and really wanted it um but i don't but the second the first and second book like um they weren't actually there when i bought this but because i really want to read it it's up there um yeah an angel renowned for a ruthlessness and the woman who became his obsession um yeah so it's about an angel and this woman a tormented past is left thin with an insatiable need for violence making him the most dangerous assassin in the skies because remember he's an angel he lives by a single code no mercy and as he unleashes his fury on his most recent capture he learns no battle could have prepared him for the slave he rescues from his enemy's clutches a beauty who stokes the fire of his darkest desires so that's ellen vale um also i have just remembered Although I'll give you a description on it, if you go back and look at my Asking Down Mika You video, which I did with Ellie. Oh my god, this video's now. Can I ignore that? So, next week I'm just going to literally tell you the title. That's going to be it. I'm sorry about that, but that's how it's going to be because I didn't want the video this long. Um, but yeah, so this, I actually read like a, like two or three paragraphs of this in my Asking Down Mika You video, so that. <laughs> Keep in mind, we are a bit of random paragraphs, but, you know, still part of the book nonetheless. Yeah, these next ones I'm just going to have to tell you the titles of, because, like, genuinely, it's like five o'clock now, um, and this video's been going on for an hour, so. Um, so this is by Christi Kristen? Christi Christine? I couldn't say Christine there. Christine? Fihan, Ruthless Game. Haven't read it, can't tell you about it. Witchwood, currently in the middle of reading this. Um, basically, um, she got the main character fired from her job, boyfriend just for a couple of, you know, basically, life's falling apart, so she moved back home. Um, she had this, like, forest behind her house, where she used to make up all these really inventive stories and stuff. Um, and the forest is meant to be some sort of like secret holding place um and when she gets back um she's she's like a journalist that's the job she got fired from you know she gets back finds out someone's been murdered so that's that good book though definitely next one's a trilogy it's the um the Angel Fall trilogy, I believe. Or actually it might be called something else. Don't probably know what it's, the trilogy is called. But the books are Angel Fall, World After, End of Days, in that order. They're by Susan E. Like genuinely by Susan E. E. That's how her name is done. Like, um like, just in case you didn't get what I meant. It's like there on the edge. Um but yeah idea of the story angels have invaded no one really knows why i believe um they've stolen the main character they've kidnapped the main character's sister who's disabled um i'm in the middle of the first book all in this trilogy oh sorry the trilogy penrin and the end of days so yeah there you go um yeah that's the first book anyway Obviously, not onto the second and third book, so I can't really tell you if that's the same idea. Um, next one's Adrift by Rob Bofford and Asylum by Ma I think that's Madeline Rouge, maybe? I mean, her last name's spelled R O U X, but I don't know. So, those are the next ones. Um, in case you're wondering, they look like this. Don't have time to tell you about them, unfortunately. 
this video is already too long. Next two ones. One of Us is Lying um, by Karen McManus. Have read it. Really good book. Definitely should read this. Um, so the thing is, there's these like five five students, and it's I think the what it's meant to be is it's the five cliche people out of like books. So you know you've got a geek, a jock, a criminal, and a princess, um, and then there's a murderer, because there's five students that go into detention, and then but only four leave because someone has been killed, and I think so it's called one of us is lying, so it's obviously like which one of them did it. You know, this idea. You assume it's the criminal. I mean, like, literally. But, don't trust that. I say I've read it. I've read part of it. <laughs> so, it's stretching the truth. I started reading it. But then, like, you know, I got busy. So, I, I'm gonna start it again. Um, Born in the Blocks. Haven't started reading it yet. Want to, though. It's short, so I can, I'll read this quickly, and I mean quickly. Uh, meet Dirty Something Dad Alex. He loves his wife Jodie, but has forgotten how to show it. He loves his son Sam, but doesn't understand him. Something has to change. Meet eight year old Sam. Beautiful, surprising, autistic. To him, the world is a puzzle he can't solve on his own. When Sam starts to play Minecraft, it opens up a place where Alex and Sam begin to read and discover both for themselves and each, co and each other. You know what's ironic? Is that Alex is actually the Minecraft, like... <laughs> Default girl. Why could why couldn't you call the boy Steve? Actually no, I like Sam better. I don't actually like the name Steve. No offense to anyone whose name is Steve. I just don't personally like the name. But you know. Is that how that went? That is how that went. Okay. Next to Devil's Drew. Um by Rachel Kane. Haven't read it, can't tell you about it. Um the girl who knew had read it. Ryan to remember, because this was years ago. Small little book. Still quite entertaining, though. So, it's, um, right. Ah, yeah, so this girl called Kits, um, she got into an accident. And I think afterwards, oh yeah, and she got, yeah, okay, so this, I'm just reading what it says, because I can't probably remember. Um... So Kits got paralysed in a hit and run accident, and she is really angry after it, obviously. Um, but most of her anger is to her best friend Lisa because she escaped the accident. Um, but except Lisa can't remember a single detail to tell the police. And Kits gains like the ability to dream a future that really happens even to read another's mind. So she gets scared and confused at the accident, um, and then she understands the accident was no accident, and that Lisa is in danger. So, really good book. Of course, I don't remember it. I just remember it was a good book. Um, read it like four years ago though, so. Sun is also a star. Um, if you... <laughs> Sun is also a star. You may know how to have something called Everything Everything, or maybe you've heard of this one first. You know, same author. Um, by Nic so Nicola Yoon. Haven't read this book. Can't tell you again. Um, the story of a girl and a boy and a universe. So I assume it's another love story. Oh no, sorry. I just read. Um, falling in love with him won't be my story. So I got mistaken for that a lot. I'll give you the next two. Next two are not connected. They're like miscellaneous, so I'm just going to take them out at once. So you have Don't Close Your Eyes by Holly Seddon. Um, it's about another pair of twins. You can tell I like books about twins, apparently. Um, yeah, Bob and Sarah went close as twins, but they loved each other dearly until they were taken from one another. Um, so basically, Sarah got, she got what she wanted, has a perfect life. Robin, complete opposite because she's like housebound and is suffering from panic attack. Pan panic attacks until one day she sees something she shouldn't. So you know, happy twin, sad twin. You know. Um, next one's Lullaby by Amanda Hawken. Um, Gemma has to disappear with Penn, Lexi, and 
um, Tia, after a night of incredible violence on the island, she can still barely come to terms with her new affinity with Yildren. And the siren powers that go with it. Oh my god, why have I not read this? A girl turns into a siren. That's, wow. Don't know why I didn't read that. Did I tell you about Don't Close Your Eyes? I did. That's Robin, Robin and Sarah, the twins. Happy twin, sad twin. AKA, the slowly going insane twin. I can't get this book back in the shelf. Because I am an actual. Oh my gosh, right. You know what? Fine, say it then. Next one is four books in a series. Not a very appealing angle for you right now, but well. Um, don't know what this series is properly called necessarily. Oh wait, here we go. Tells me the Rephaim um series. If you want to know how that's spelled, it's R E P H A I M Rephaim. Um, so they're by Paula Weston. Um, they sound really good, I just haven't got read to reading them yet. Oh, okay, yeah, so, um, a girl, unfortunately, watches her twin brother die. See, I just get a lot of books about twins. I say that, I've only got, like, three, well, technically, this is four. Great. Um, but yeah, since Gabby Winters watched her twin brother die, um... Even in her dream, she fights and kills hell beasts, and then Rafa comes to town and tells her things about her brother and her life that cannot be true. Who is Rafa? Who are the Rephaim? And who is Gabby? The truth lies in the shadows of her nightmares. Wow. So yeah. Um, I mean, at the top, it genuinely says, Love, Nightmares, Angel, War. So, you know. Shadows is book one. Burn is book two. Haze is book three. And Shimmer is book four. So. Yeah, no. Can I actually get this book back in there? Yes, I can. Again, not an appealing angle for you right now, because I'm like, got my back to you, but. You have to deal with it. Also, I have never made a video that's like over an hour, because last time I checked, it's like an, it was like an hour and ten minutes. Longest video was the Ask and Do a Miku You video. But now this tops it. And it's probably not even entertaining for you. So that's great. Next series is actually um the Warrior Cat series. So this is the series I said that I'm missing a book from. Um because I have Into the World, the first book. These are by um Erin Hunter by the way. Really love these books. Recommend them. You might not like them if you don't like you know, things about cats and, like, the being in clans and stuff. Um, so first one, um, Into the World. Second one's Fire and Ice. I have read this. I think I've only read the first two, Into the World and, um, Fire and Ice. But yeah, then it's... Well, actually... No, sorry, I think I did get onto Forest of Secrets, but then I stopped it because these books got put away. Yeah, so I only read like a few pages into this. Um, so that's Forest of Secrets. Okay, right. This is Rise and Storm. Is this the part where I've missed a part? Also, in here it does actually tell you like all the like who everyone is, who is in the clan, stuff like that. So I really like that part about it. Also gives you like a map. Is this the Give me a minute. I'm trying to figure out which book is it I'm missing. Ah, here we go. Okay, so it's Into the Wild, Fire and Ice, Forest of Secret. Wait. Into the Wild, Fire and Ice, Forest of Secrets. Then A Dangerous Path is the one I'm missing. This is Rise and Storm here. So this is the fifth book. And the darkest hour is the sixth book, but there are other books that aren't technically part of the series because there's something about a cat called Blue Star that she's got her own story, I think, and things like that. I don't have those ones. I am go I am planning to get them though. I was making sure I put those books back in right order. Then. Okay, we're nearly done. We've only got twelve. Done. We have thirteen books left. 
But yeah, um, by the way, warrior cats, it's, so there's obviously all these wild cats, but how it actually starts is, there's this cat called Rusty, he's a house cat, but then he finds, um, the clans, I can't remember which clan it was specifically, he is, he got himself into, um, basically he finds that, and then he finds out he enjoys being a, um, a warrior cat more, and it's about, like, him growing up in the clans and stuff like that, and going through that, and all his friends and stuff. This next series, a bit of a younger one, but I still really enjoy it. Um, I actually read, um, back in primary school, this, like, we got, we were kind of, I guess, made, um, to read the second one. Could you imagine? How could they? Um, but I really liked it. So, obviously I just thought, well this is the first one, but then I actually googled them, and it's like, oh no, there's three of them, I started the second one in primary. But yeah, so I enjoyed this one, they're by Jessica Day George, um, and it's set in a kind of older time I guess you could say, but there's dragons and stuff around. First one's dragon skin slippers, second one's dragon flight, third one's dragon spear. I've read these two, but I'm going to read this one. To refresh my memory on it. Um, or actually, I think I was going to reread both of them to refresh my memory on it. And then I'm going so I can read this one. Um, so it's a girl called Creel. Yeah, I was about to say Creed. But it's Creel. And um, how does it go again? Oh my god. Yep, I was right. I was double checking something. You don't believe me, but I swear it was. Um, Creel was a man outside a dragon's cave. Um, because I think, is it her aunt? Yeah, her mean aunt. Um, and like basically no one thinks she's gonna survive, but the, I think the dragon that she's left to takes her in. Ah uh, yeah, she befriends the dragon and he gives her a very special pair of shoes, which is the dragon skin slippers. Um, and so that, that, so this one's about what the dragon skin slippers do. Second one is about... Um, yeah, because there's a dragon war in this one. Um, oh yeah, Creel, oh yeah, Creel becomes a seamstress, by the way. And she gets bored with that. Then comes, oh yeah, so it's like a neighbour in land, something happens with them. And the thing was, some, well actually, I don't know if, I don't think I can tell you that part, so it's kind of spoilers. But you know, basically something happens within, um, the other country, and it ends up to be another war. Um, then they don't want to involve dragons and stuff. And this third one, humans and dragons are actually at peace. But I ha obviously I haven't read that yet. So, but definitely recommend that series. So again, that's Dragon Skin Slippers, Dragon Flight, and Dragon Spear by Jessica B. George. So, next two, really great. Um, this is part of a series, a 10 book series, I believe. But there may be like another, I think there's another book out of it, I don't know. I'm sure Vianna will correct me on this. Um, I only have the first two. I was meant to get the third one at some point, but I didn't, unfortunately. Um, so it's the Skullduggery Pleasant series by Derek Landy. Really good. Um, I have read books one and two. Um, so Skullduggery, surprise, surprise, skeleton. Um, oh no, sorry, skeleton, detective, magician, and warrior, sorry, I forgot his full description. Um, I don't really know how to describe the Skull Dragon Pleasant series to you, it's kind of a difficult one to describe for me, but, you know, all I can say to you is it's really good and you should definitely read it. But yeah. So the first one's just called Ugly Pleasant and the second one's Flame with Fire. Um, but there is about like 10 books at this point in the series. Next one is another series. But I don't have the third book to it. So, so it's a trilogy, sorry. Um, first one's called Wait, have I got this the wrong way around so I normally do? No, this is right I think. First one's Linger, second one is Shiver. I have read both of these. Um, so, basically, if I have got this correct, wait, nope, I've got this, uh, damn it, I've got it the wrong way around again, shiver then linger, sorry, 
and they're both it's actually by the same author that made the raven boys the book that i said um i got bored kind of part way through but these two are really but this trilogy i really like um so it's like um i've got to double check so i can't remember this oh my god so is your how good i am oh yeah so a local boy killed by wolves um, Grace's small town becomes a place of fear, but Grace is fascinated by the pack and finds herself inexplicably drawn to a yellow-eyed wolf. There's something about him, something almost human. Then she meets a yellow-eyed boy who's familiar to her, takes her breath away. And all I'm going to say is the, sec the second one's about Grace's love story. So, uh, that can give you a little bit. Okay, these next five, I'm going to give you all one. Because they're all manga. If you don't know what a manga is, you probably know what an anime is. So anime, you probably know. Manga, you might not. Manga is basically anime in book form, is how I'd like to describe it. The first two I have here are the first two volumes of Assassination Classroom. Really good anime. Good manga. Um, so this I can describe. It's better describe an anime, even though this is a manga. Um, so high school students or in this class called E-Class. Um, and what that is, it's a little classroom away from campus. They've been put in that class because of grades, behaviour, things like that. Um, and so, think of that as because of they've been shunned out, almost, of the school. And so they just, one day, they, um, their moon is blown up, part of the way anyway. And it's by this guy on the front, called Koro Sensei. He's some sort of like alien thing. We'll call him octopus, cause that's what they call him. Um, and basically, their the class's new job is to assassinate their teacher because the kind of alien, um, well, core sensei becomes their teacher. And he's like, if you can't assassinate me in this time, or like by the time uh, your year ends or whatever, um. I'm going to do the same thing to Earth. So that's their job. But obviously they end up getting really attached to their teacher and there's different stories in it. And really good. Recommend the anime. Recommend the manga. I only have the first two volumes. There are more volumes of this. But, you know. So, next one is Attack on Titan. Again, anime and a manga. So, again, kind of like post-apocalyptic world, technically. Um, there's these things called titans, and they're basically giant man-eating creatures, and they have basically invaded the world. So the people, certain soldiers called like Servi Corps, and other things, if I try get rid of them. Main character Eren, his mum's killed. He wants revenge, so he joins the Servi Corps. Things like that, you know. Again, good anime, good manga, recommend. Last one, so that's the first two volumes I have because I got them for my birthday from a friend called Hallie. Um, this one, unfortunately, only have the first volume of. Um, eventually, I'll have I'll need, like, a whole second bookshelf for manga because there's like loads of volumes to manga. This is for the end. One of my favourite animes, along with Assassination Classroom and things like Fairy Tale and such, as you can see, I genuinely love anime stuff in different places because I have all this manga. Literally, as you may have seen when I was googling what that word meant. Tokyo Cool Phone Case. Death Note poster. Near a figure up there from Death Note. Um, so yeah. This, it's um, Seth the and Vampire Vein. First volume. So, um, the world has kind of been in so vampires roam among their world kind of and so there's this thing it's like some sort of seraph experiment um and it's where all these kids have been taken into this place and um so you know it's like there's an apocalypse before like the vampires take over the world i think yeah so the apocalypse happens and the vampires rise in the earth and so the main character among others um when they're kids 
are taken to this place and it's like oh you can't run away or leave because you'll fall victim to um i think it's some sort of virus that's going around um but yeah the main character yuichiro <laughs> see funny thing is you may know this because yuchan aka yuichiro is actually who i cosplay quite often on my channel and mika is who ellie was who is also in this obviously um basically main idea he tries you and mika try to run away you kind of know different things because of my asking to make your videos and stuff like that um as they try and run away and their family gets killed i can kind of tell you that part because it's been mentioned in some of my like cosplay videos of him and stuff and then so he goes up he so you's the only one that makes out he bumps into people like called Gurin and like his other friends, or other co-workers or whatever, his squad. Um, and so he grows up in kind of the place where he works, called the Moon Demon Company. And so he, his thing is, he wants to get revenge for his family, and then he ends up, you know, going through that and stuff. But yeah, really good anime, actually like up in my, probably like top five maybe, um, of anime good manga but yeah so really recommend that also guess i can give you shameless promo recommend my cosplay videos of you chan um there's like three of them <laughs> so now we've got down to the final book at like the one hour 26 minute mark this is a return to youtube video 10 minutes was it was just scribing why i was gone this other hour and 16 minutes was a book collection. I stray from the topic a lot. This one, old book, as you can tell. I think it actually came from my... I think my granny actually gave it to me. Um, I wish she gave it to my mum and my mum gave it to me. That was me nearly ripping the book. Um, it's Black Beauty. I'm sure a lot of you have... A good few of you have heard of it. It's about like a horse. Never properly read Black Beauty, so I can't properly explain it to you. I just know it's like a good story. But yeah, so without further ado, that is the end of this book collection. I hope you enjoyed. Um, my next video out is either going, should either be, uh, what's, there's going to be a cosplay video, either way I think. Um, so yeah. It'll, it'll either be an, a Maimon video from Blue Exorcist, a Yuchan video from Seraph, from Seraph the end, um, or it'll be a video of me. So it'll be one of those three. Um, if you want to give your opinion, comment down below. Tell me which one. Tell me which one you'd want to see more. And without further ado, I guess that this is goodbye and end my video announcing that I am coming back to YouTube. But yeah, um, again, I've started fourth year, so videos won't be as constant because I have stuff to do. Like, I literally have already have like homework and a test to revise for, like, now I'm still doing this. So, but yeah, whatever I do, I guess that's it for this video. So, 